Hi, welcome to this supervised learning tutorial on how to do a linear regression in Python. Click the link in the video description to follow along in DataCamp workspace. First of all, when can linear regression be used? Now, there are two main conditions on this. The first is that the response variable, that is the thing that you're trying to predict, that needs to be a continuous numeric variable. So if you have a binary response or a categorical response or perhaps a account data response, then you're going to need to use one of the other generalized linear model types like logistic regression or Poisson regression or maybe something else. You also need the observations to be independent. So if you have uh, data on uh, measurements on people and you have repeated measurements from the same person, they're not going to be independent. So you need to use a different model type like mixed effect models. There are many, many different Python packages that you can use to perform linear regression. Today, we're going to use scikit-learn. That's the default package for anything machine learning. Uh, I also quite like stats models, uh, since the code for writing uh, models in stats models is very similar to how you'd write it in R. So if you flip between R and Python a lot, then stats models, uh, the code's sometimes a bit easier to remember. Uh, then, of course, there's PyCarrot, TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, like any of the other machine learning frameworks. Uh, they're all going to uh, let you do linear regression. Today, we've got a case study on predicting brain weight. Uh, I managed to take out a data set from 1905, so classic data set. Uh, so we're predicting people's brain weights based on the volume of their head. Uh, links to the data source and description from uh, the notebook. So we've been using Pandas for the data manipulation, scikit-learn for modeling, and then Plotly Express for plotting. So let's start writing some code. So we're going to do import pandas as a PD. And then from the scikit-learn learn, uh, model selection uh, submodule, we're going to import train test split for specific data into training testing sets. And then from uh, sklearn dot linear uh, model, we're going to import linear. Uh, regression. And finally, we're going to import uh, plotly express as px. Uh, SK learn has an R in it. Let's rerun that again. The data set is in a CSV file. The CSV file is called brainhead.csv. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, let's just call the, uh, the data set brainhead. Do pd dot read underscore csv and pass in the file name here. So that's brainhead.csv and let's print out the results so you can see what's going on. Uh, all right, if we go through the uh, the data dictionary, uh, you can see there's four columns here. So the first one is gender, this is from 1905, so the only choices are male and female. We've got age range can be either uh, 20 to 46 or 46 plus. Uh, we've got the head size in centimeters cubed. So 1,000 centimeters cubed is one liter. So you can see the head size of uh, most people is around uh, four liters, give or take. And then brain weight in grams. So most people's brain uh, weighs a, a bit over a kilogram. A uh, bit of uh, data pre-processing to do. So uh, scikit-learn can't deal with the categorical uh, columns like, uh, like we have for gender and age range uh, directly. So we're going to have to uh, convert those into dummy columns of ones and zeros. Uh, so for that, we're going to use uh, the pandas get dummies uh, function, and uh, we're going to pass in brainhead. Uh, let me assign the result to brainhead dumb for dummies, and we're going to print out uh, the result. So now you can see, rather than having a single column for gender, we've got two columns with ones and zeros indicator values, same for age range. We need to extract the uh, response variable uh, from the data set. So that is going to be brainhead underscore dumb. And the column is called brain weight uh, chief grams. And then the explanatory variables. Uh, so these are going to be the inputs to the model. Uh, put an extra in brainhead. Uh, the inputs to the model is going to be every other uh, column and the data sets uh, apart from brain weight. So we're just going to drop uh, the uh, column named brain weight gene. Uh, so this response value, that's going to be uh, a pandas series and explanatory is going to be 
a pandas data frame with every column except uh, except this frame bit. All right, so next thing, we need to split the data into training and testing sets. We're going to use train test to split for this. And this takes the explanatory variables and the response variable. And it's going to return four different things. It's going to return explanatory train. Uh, let me copy this so I don't make as many typos. Explanatory test and then response train. and response test. So uh, we've got four different uh, things being returned there. I'm going to do shift and run that. And that's all the uh, data processing, pre-processing we need. We're now ready to fit the model. So first thing to do is to, first model step is to create a linear regression object. I'm just going to call this uh, MDL as in short for model. So linear regression, again, be careful with the capitalization there. Um, we just use default options. You don't need to do anything special here. And to actually fit the model, we use the fit method. So we're going to fit this to the training set. So we're going to uh, pass an explanatory train and a response train. Um, again, this doesn't show any exciting output. What it's doing is it is calculating the coefficients of the model in order that we can make predictions. So now we're ready to uh, make predictions. Uh, we're going to do this on the testing set, and we're going to use the predict method. So uh, we've got model, and we're going to call predict, and we're going to pass in this time uh, explanatory uh, test. So this is giving uh, the answer back is, is a NumPy array. And each of these values, that's a predicted brain weight, so a predicted response value. Um, by itself, it's a bit hard to see what's going on. So one thing that's really helpful is if we combine the actual responses and the predicted responses together in a data frame. So I'm just going to move that down a little bit. I'm going to call pd.dataframe. Uh, let's move those closing uh, parentheses to the end. And uh, so the actual uh, responses we know those already, so that's uh, response. Um, it's called response test. And then these things here from predict, uh, let's call these predicted. So now we have uh, a data frame of two columns. So these are actual brain weights from real people, and these are predicted brain weights from the model. So you can see here someone's uh, actual brain. Uh, 1,185 grams uh, and predicted brain weight, uh, 1,193 grams. So let's save this to a variable, uh, let's call it uh, responses. Uh, let me uh, paste that again so you can uh, see the output still. And a really great way to visualize this data frame is by drawing a scatter plot with uh, predicted responses on the y axis actual responses on the x-axis. So we're going to use px.scatter here, uh, pass in responses to the data frame, and then on the x-axis, uh, we're going to have uh, actual, and on the y-axis, we're going to have predicted. Let's just run that. So uh, good news is that as actual brain weights uh, increase, so do the predicted brain weights, so that's looking pretty good. One thing to make this plot easier to see is if we uh, make um, this a square plot, so rather than it being very wide and not very tall. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the width to 600 pixels, and same for the height, uh, th. Uh, let's rerun that. So it's sort of nearly square. Uh, you can see the grid lines aren't quite square yet. So one thing we have to do is um, assign this to a figure object. I'm just going to call it fig. And then we do fig.update y axes. And there are two um, variables we need to set here. Uh, one is scale anchor. I'm going to set that to x. I'll explain what this does in a moment. Let's do it. Um, and then we're going to do scale ratio is one. 
So what they're saying is change the y axis uh, based on the x axis. So every time x increases by one, y also increases by one. And then I'm just going to print this uh, figure out. Let's just rerun that. Um, ooh, so and now you can see um, the grid axis, they're actually, uh, it's showing two squares here because there's a slightly more range in, in one um, direction compared to the others. But now you can see if you move same distance uh, on, if you move like 200 on the X axis, this you see the same distance on the, the Y axis. So these are now squares. And what we really want to see uh, in a good model fit is that the uh, X and Y values, the actual and predicted uh, responses are the same. So you want uh, the numbers to be kind of following along this, this line with a slope of one. So it looks fairly good here. We want to do a bit more diagnostic to see uh, what the deal is. So um, it's a great thing you can do to check model fit. In fact, there are lots of different plots you can draw, but um, pretty much all of them involve residuals in some ways. So we're going to calculate the residuals of the model. Now, residuals uh, are the actual responses minus the predicted responses. Uh, so we've got the responses uh, data frame. Uh, let me just uh, copy this. And we're going to create a new column called uh, residual. And this is equal to the uh, actual responses minus the predicted responses. Uh, and let's just uh, type this out again so you can see the result. So same data frame as before, but now we've got an extra column. So you can see in this case, uh, when the actual value is 1185, uh, predicted value is 1193, the residual is minus eight. And ideally you want these numbers to be pretty small. Uh, you see that one's a bit, uh, a bit further out. So a larger value of uh, minus 154, so that was a pretty poor prediction. But in general, those numbers look uh, pretty good. Um, of course, reading through a table, not a great way to understand your data, much better to draw a plot. So last thing we're going to do is draw another scatter plot. Uh, so we're going to do a plot of scatter, we're going to pass in uh, responses. This time on the x-axis, we're going to have, we're going to show the predicted values. And on the y-axis, we're going to show the residuals. And one thing we'd like to see is that across all of the range of the predicted values, the residuals are close to zero. So I'm going to run this. Uh, so it's residual, not residuals. So um, across the whole range of predicted values, you want the, what, the, the residuals to be close to zero. Um, this is OK to look at the scatter plot. What's even better is if you draw a non-parametric trend line using, for example, uh, the lowest algorithm. Um, so that's uh, not using any equations. It's just looking at like where the data is. And you want that line to be close to zero. So we're going to add in an argument here, uh, trend line equals low S, and rerun this. And we want this this blue line to be close to zero. And you see it's, it's kind of not bad. Uh, it waves up and down a bit, but it's sort of fairly close. Uh, so what we're saying here is the model is actually a fairly reasonable fit, especially when you consider that it's a small data set from 1905. If you are interested in learning more, uh, there is a scikit-learn tutorial uh, from the makers of scikit-learn. And then DataCamp has many courses that cover linear regression in Python. Uh, a good place to start is the machine learning with scikit-learn course. This provides a general overview of uh, modeling the scikit-learn. It does include a section on linear regression. If you want a real deep dive into um, regression, there are uh, this is a series of two courses, so Introduction to Regression with Stats Models in Python and Intermediate Regression with Stats Models in Python. Um, these cover uh, more on model diagnostics and how the algorithms work. Uh, they use stats models rather than psychic learnings. It's very easy to uh, explain the theory behind using stats models. Um, if you're interested, uh, please do take a look at these DataCamp courses and don't forget to check out further tutorials on this channel.